two years ago, I made this project an OpenGL. But here's the thing, I didn't really make it. I just followed the tutorial and convinced myself that it was mine. Soon after, I gave up on OpenGL. Fast forward two years, I decided to try again. This time, I wanted to actually understand what I was doing. So I went back to the basics, learned how things really work, and set out to make a 2D game engine from scratch. Here is how I did it. After setting up my libraries and getting a window to appear on my screen, the next step was to create a triangle. Simple in concept. But how do I do it? Well, a triangle is made up of three points, called vertices. To draw it, we first need to store the coordinates of these vertices in a data structure, like an std vector or a c-style array. Then we create a vertex buffer object, or a VBO for short, which stores this geometry directly on the GPU. Next, we set up a vertex array object, or VAO for short. The VAO keeps track of how all the vertex data is organized. Things like positions, texture coordinates, color values, and stride. Once everything's configured, we finally call the glDrawArrays function. Right now it's white, kinda boring if you ask me. Let's color it. Say we wanted to make this triangle purple. We need to use shaders to do this. You might be imagining something like this. But this is far from what we're doing. Shaders aren't just fancy lighting or realistic shadows. They're essential for anything that has color or texture at all. To write shaders, we use another programming language called the GLSL the OpenGL shading language. There are two main types of shaders we will use. Vertex shaders, as the name suggests, it processes each vertex of our geometry. This is where we handle transformations, things like position, scaling, and rotation. Fragment shader, as the name failed to suggest, this one's all about color. It determines what each pixel on the screen should look like applying colors, textures, or visual effects. Once both shaders are compiled and linked together, we can finally render our purple triangle. Yeah! Step three of making a 2D game engine is to automate rendering shapes to simplify the process. So the first thing I did was create a simple shape class. From what we already know, it's super easy to create a create triangles function. So let's move on to creating a square. Every shape in computer graphics is built from triangles. So to draw a square, we need to use two triangles. But wait, some of these vertices overlap. Right now we have six vertices, even though we only really need four. On a small scale, when drawing simple shapes, that's okay. But when we start rendering complex shapes or 3D models, that redundancy can really slow things down. So let's improve our code for good practice. We will use an element buffer object, or EBO. The EBO stores the indices, the order of which vertices should be drawn. Instead of duplicating vertex data, it simply refers back to existing vertices when needed. We then link the element buffer object to our vertex array object, so OpenGL knows to draw everything in the correct order. Here's the code I wrote to automate this process. And once that's set up, we got an optimally rendered square on the screen. Creating a circle is a bit more of a challenge. A circle is made up of a ton of triangles pointing towards the center of the circle. These triangles are called segments. And using some mathematical equations that I definitely didn't copy and totally understand perfectly, we can calculate the coordinates of each vertex by looping through the angle values. It took a few tries, but in the end, we got a perfect circle. How about a perfect circle? Now that we can render proper shapes, it's time for collisions. Wait a sec, how are we supposed to detect collisions? 
when we can't even move our shapes yet? Well, let's think back a moment. To move our shapes, we first need to know how a camera moves. So let's dig into that. A camera uses something called a projection matrix. No, not that kind of matrix. The projection matrix is multiplied with every vertex position in the scene. This can make it look like the camera is moving, zooming, or rotating. But in reality, the camera never actually moves. What's actually happening is everything else in the scene is moving in the opposite direction. If you move the camera to the right, everything else shifts to the left. If you rotate the camera clockwise, the entire world rotates anti-clockwise in coordinate space, creating the illusion of a camera movement. Once our camera has a projection matrix, we can give every object in the scene its own model matrix. By multiplying the model matrix with the vertex positions in the vertex shader, we can finally move our objects around the scene, independently of the camera. If you're interested in how matrices work in depth, I highly recommend 3Blue1Brown's video on the topic. He explains it way better than I did in this short segment. So let's go back to what I said earlier and add a few types of collisions. First up is AABB collisions. This stands for Axis Aligned Bounding Box. It's a collision check between two quadrilaterals. 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 Got it. Basically, we compare the distance between each object's position plus half of its scale. If the distance is smaller than what it should be, that means that the quadrilateral, the squares are overlapping and therefore colliding. Once a collision is detected, we can reverse the object's velocity or just adjust its position slightly to push it out of the collision box. And we got working AABB collisions. I could also talk about the circle to circle collisions and circle to rectangle collisions, but honestly, if I start explaining every collision type I used, this video would become a nightmare to edit. <laughs> this is still looking kind of bland. I mean, we could just make a game with what we have so far, but where's the fun in that? Just solid color shapes? No. What we really need are textures. Remember the triangle we drew earlier? Texture coordinates, or UVs, work a bit differently from the regular vertex coordinates. Instead of starting from the center of the screen, the texture coordinates range from 00, 0 to 1, 1, where 00, 0 represents the bottom left corner of the image and 1, 1 the top right. These coordinates tell OpenGL which part of the image to map onto each vertex in the shape. So by connecting the right UVs to the right vertices, the texture gets stretched along the shape. To make things easier, I automated this process. The game engine now automatically generates texture coordinates for the shapes I draw. And with that, we've gone from boring shapes to beautiful artwork. Let's start making a game using these automated tools now. First, let's get a ball to bounce around the screen using this ball class I made. Then we can add some bricks stored in a vector, which the ball can interact with. Finally, a paddle to move and reflect the ball. So, what do I think of OpenGL? It's a pain sometimes, and it's definitely really difficult. But it is really, really awesome and I will definitely be coming back to OpenGL in the future and diving even deeper into graphics programming. Till then, see ya!